We can even see social change through names. We've evolved long past the days of chastity and prudence to the days of destiny and Desiree. I was going to mention Diamond, but I didn't want to turn this into a list of stage names for strippers. <laughs> no, I confess, I'm not really Elena. My birth name is Chang Hesu. Chang is my last name, and Hesu is my first name. The head means graceful, and Su means intelligent, or beautiful, something like that. I don't know, but yeah, I'm pretty freaking special, but not many Americans caught on. See, for a long time, I went by the Romanized version of my Korean name, He Su Cheng. Unless you're familiar with the Korean language, you'd probably mispronounce that as Hai Su, which is fine, but that meant for a long time, kids would always greet me with, Hi, Su. Real creative, I know, and I was sick of it. Finally, I begged my parents to give me a more white-sounding name, and I'm still not sure where Elena came from, but that's fine, whatever. <laughs> and I'm not the only one who's living this sort of double life. White and Asian American parents actually give their kids very similar names, but the latter will also give their kids ethnic names. These kids go by their English names at school, but then come home and it's like they're different people. Uh, I always wondered if other minorities went through the same thing, but it turns out Asian Americans are a little different. Hispanic Americans, for instance, will take on distinctly Hispanic names like Daniela instead of Danielle, Mateo instead of Matthew. But the biggest racial gap of all is between blacks and whites. How often do you find white people with names like Tyrone, Jamal, Deja, or Shanice? It's not a coincidence, African Americans tend to take on distinct names. This black-white gap in names is actually a pretty recent phenomenon that popped up around the 1970s. Until then, blacks had very Anglo-American names, but to accentuate their culture, distinctly black names arose as a statement of solidarity against white power. But this effort proved to be a double-edged sword. See, blacks with distinctly black names and blacks with white names tend to come from extremely different backgrounds, have extremely different life outcomes. A Deshaun is more likely to come from a low income, low education, single parent background than a Jake. Jake is statistically going to earn more money and get more education than Deshaun. But it's not about all race. Um, they say a lot about your class, too. Contrary to popular belief, celebrities don't drive name trends. It's all about high income, high education parents. These parents give their kids names that reflect their place in society, and then people in lower income brackets will follow suit and give their kids those names. Over time, names fall out of favor with the upper classes to settle at the bottom of the socioeconomic ladder. This trickle-down phenomenon shows another interesting trend. The lower the income bracket, the more common a name becomes. Likewise, middle-class parents will give their kids formal names like uh, Richard or Robert, whereas low-education parents are more likely to abbreviate those names to names like uh, Ricky or Bobby. <laughs> this is also where you see all these different spelling variations of a single name, like with Brittany, Jasmine, or Caitlin. Meanwhile, upper-class kids have more esoteric names like uh, Cooper, Liam, Reagan, Annika, Asher, Avery, and Quinn. Another defining characteristic of names, gender. Society establishes a distinct difference between male and female names. You can probably assume an Alexander is a boy, while well, Alexandra is probably a girl. But what about the nickname for these names? Alex. What then? This brings me to another important subject, gender neutrality. <laughs> There's a huge income disparity between men and women. Women who work full-time year-round still earn about a third less than men on average. Some parents have decided to combat this gender gap by giving their kids gender-neutral names like um, Dakota, Sydney, or Casey. Guess what? Taylor Swift was actually given a gender-neutral name because her parents thought it would help her become successful in business. Fun fact, Shirley, Carol, Leslie, Renee, Stacy, and Tracy all started out as boys' names. But parents have feminized these names over time by giving their daughters these names. You don't see this trend get reciprocated from girls to boys. See, uh, boy names are supposed to denote masculinity, dominance, strength, and power, whereas girl names embody feminine grace, beauty, and passivity. A girl named Cody is a tough, cool tomboy, tomboy, one of the guys, but a boy named Heather is weak, inferior. He gets called, he gets called gay, fag, and all these other horribly offensive slurs. This gender standard uh, reinforces a terrible double standard. Names are reflections of our backgrounds and identities, and we, even though we don't like to acknowledge it, we often use names to judge people and slap labels on them. When I first started school, a lot of teachers flat out refused to try to pronounce my Korean name. It made me feel different, like I didn't belong. I asked my parents to give me a more white name, and they gave me Elena, which I liked at the time, but sometimes I kind of miss Hesu. Thank you.